holy ground um, welcome back to our thursday prayer night and before we begin our worship let us pray together lord god we thank you for this day today we thank you for the worship that we are about to start lord bless us as we sing upon to you lord god and we thank you for everything that you've done for us lord you are pro our provider lord god and we bless us with more things to come lord and in jesus name i pray amen amen And I 
like you so great in your loving kindness so great with your grace that is poured out upon your people so great mercies oh god that are given to us every day so great wisdom lord that you bestow upon your people when we need it so great compassion oh god that reaches out to the lost to the needy to the dying world out there and lord with that acknowledgement of who you are we just thank you for this time that we can gather and learn from your word where we can gather as a people to unite our hearts and in faith to pray for needs lord to acknowledge that you are the god who answers prayer so father even as today is the national day of prayer i pray that it will not just be one day oh god that we acknowledge it but every day of our lives lord jesus that lord we will continue lord god with the freedom that we have to pray for this nation and for the nations of the world and so lord we just acknowledge by your spirit that we are nothing that we are limited and holy spirit we pray that you give us the needs the requests that we need to pray for and lord deepen our sensitivity to your leading to be able to hear your voice and not just to hear your voice oh god but to have a heart to obey and by your same spirit holy spirit you will enable us you will give us the supernatural strength with which to do the great things that you have declared that we will do in jesus name so father we acknowledge that this time is dedicated to just the sharing of your word for your word brings life to the people who hears it your word brings faith oh god to those who are starting to waver in their belief your word brings hope oh god to those who are losing hope in the name of jesus we declare that god the answers to needs and prayers are being met the answers are on the way and you are using even your people oh god to need to answer needs of the others that are looking for it hallelujah lord jesus thank you thank you oh god for what you will do tonight for we pray all these things in the mighty name of jesus who is the greatest beyond compare amen and amen Last week we studied about Acts chapter 4, how the disciples, right, were growing in numbers because they were just yielding to the Holy Spirit and allowing no one to stop them from preaching about Christ and what he has done. And just day by day meeting together and then acknowledging the move of the Holy Spirit and so the Lord added and added to the number of those who believe. And so as we read Acts 5, shall we read from verses 1 to 16? It's quite uh, uh, um, several verses. But, you know, the word of God spoken out loud brings life and it will accomplish the purpose for which it is um, sent. And so let's read aloud where you are. Read aloud the word of God all together now. One, two, three, verse one. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? 
And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. Then about three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she asked. She said, that's the price. And Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Verse 12, the apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people and all believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else there joined them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their numbers. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. 16. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. So the, the end of chapter 4 talked about Barnabas, right? The son of encouragement. And he talked about how he also sold a piece of property and gave the proceeds, the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet to be shared for the needs of the church. And so Acts 5 talks about another, um, this, by this, this, in this instant, a couple, Ananias and Sapphira, who also sold a piece of property. So the, the church, the, the members of the church, the disciples, we're gathering together, you know, breaking bread together, praying and going and preaching the gospel to homes, gathering at the colonnade, Solomon's colonnade, because they were, they, they had a goal. They were out to obey what the Lord had commanded them. They were on a mission to preach the gospel to everyone, to let people know about the good news of what Jesus has done and what he, that he had resurrected from the dead and that he is coming back again. And so Ananias and Sapphira were one of these people that also sold their property so that the proceeds can be shared to buy, you know, for the needs of the believers. Verse 2, with his wife's full knowledge, Ananias kept back part of the money for himself but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? So Ananias and Sapphira probably, you know, had sold a, a big, big piece of land or whatever, right? And so... When it got sold, probably a lot of money, right? And so they decided, Ananias decided, with his wife's full knowledge, I'll keep part of it. 
and will just tell the, the apostles that this is how much it's sold for, right? Let's say it's sold for 500,000. We'll just tell them it's sold for 400,000. And then we'll, we'll, gi we'll be giving the, the entire 400,000 anyways, right? And so, unbeknownst to him, the Holy Spirit has revealed to Peter what they have done. And so when he came and offered the money for the sale of the land, Peter told him, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the Lord? What he did was lie. He sold it for, let's say, 500000 and told the apostles that he sold it only for 400000 and he's giving the entire proceeds of 400000 I'm just using uh, an example of figures. That way it's clear. And so he could have told them honestly, right? This, the, the land sold for half a million, but I needed... I, I needed something like, you know, an amount for, for ourselves. And so I'm just able to give 400000 But no, he lied and told him that's the entire money that I got for the sale of the land. And it's so ironical. The name Ananias, of course, not all Ananias, people named Ananias are bad, right? Ananias means God has given. God has given. God has given blessings. God has given land. God has given family. God has given. And also the name Sapphira, <laughs> we'll know later. Okay, I'll tell you later. And so because he thought he could get away with lying and dishonesty, the Holy Spirit revealed it to Peter. And right there, after Peter declared, didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. Church, When people sin, usually or almost always, any kind of sin will be followed with lying. And then after lying, then more and more deceit and more deception. And then it keeps bearing fruit of evil and more evil and more evil. And then, of course, the end result of sin is death. And so when Ananias heard this, when Peter told him, how can you do such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. Ananias heard this. He fell down and died on the spot. And what happened? The people that were there, the believers that were there at the gathering, great fear seized. All who heard what had happened. So those who were there who witnessed it and those who heard about it because most likely those who saw it happen went out and told others, right? And so great fear, great reverence, great awe seized all who heard what had happened. We need to be the generation that will have a great reverence, great fear for a holy God. Let us be careful with the lies we tell. White lies, little lies, small lies. Let us be careful because the Lord can see in our innermost being. We can say one thing, but the Lord can discern what is in our heart. And the Lord 
will show the believers the discernment that you or other people are lying. And then after he fell down and died, some young men, verse 6, came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. I like that verse 6 that says, Some young man came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. So do you think that such an experience that this young man coming in, wrapping the body of Ananias, carrying him out and burying him, will ever forget what happened? Do you think this young man will continue to tell about this story of what happened to Ananias because he lied to God and to men? And it will be a story that will be passed on, handed uh, down from generation to generation so that the believers and all who will hear what had happened will have great fear to God, unto God. Church, let us not forget the stories of God's great deeds so that the young people, the young generation, our children, our children's children will learn to love and fear and honor and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us not stop sharing the story of the good news to people because they need to hear it. Otherwise, they will live a life of endless and hopeless end. But those who receive Jesus will be able to live a life of endless hope. Be careful. Let's be careful. Because Jesus, uh, Peter told him, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart? Maybe the heart of greed, I don't know, I can judge. But he was thinking, Ananias was thinking he could get away with it. It's probably just a smaller amount compared to the rest that he gave. But the issue is lying. Major lie. There's no minor lie. lie. A lie is a lie. It can be untruth or half-truth. It is lying. And we always say, liars go to hell. And we throw that out like just casually. But let us with great fear tell the truth. Tell the truth. Even if it hurts, but tell the truth with love, right? When you are confronting someone, tell the truth with love. Tell the truth even if you will end up, you know, getting um, the consequences with the sin. That is how it should be. But God's grace will enable us to return, to repent, and come back to him but we will still suffer the consequences of sinning, lying. God help us. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. And so, three hours later, his wife, Sapphira, came in, not knowing what had happened. So he co she comes in to the apostles, to Peter. And then Peter asks her, tell me, Sapphira, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Let's say it's half a million or 400,000. Is this the price, $400,000, that you got for the land? And uh, Sapphira says, yes, that's the price. And because they conspired, right? 
Ananias and Sapphira conspired, okay, we're going to tell them this is how much we got for the sale of the land. And so she knows, right? And then Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the man who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. Verse 10, at that moment, boom, she fell down at his feet and died. The, iron, the irony is Sapphira, the, the name Sapphira, of course, it's refers, it can refer also to the blue jewel, right? Sapphire. But the name Sapphira means that or that which relates or tells. That which relates. And so in this case, Sapphira lived up to her name. She related and she told the same lie. That Ananias told Peter that they thought they could get away with. And so then the young man, I don't know if it's the same young man, most likely because Peter said they're at the door already, the feet of the man who buried your husband. So the same young man came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. So could you imagine being that part of that group of young men? You will never, ever, ever forget the story of Ananias and Sapphira for the rest of your life. And you will make sure that the generation after you, your children when you get married, your wife or your, you know, and the next generation and the next generation will know of the story of Ananias and Sapphira so that we will learn, they will learn not to do the same thing to God. A lot of people nowadays think they can just lie to God and, and God won't know. They think they can just go on with sinning, living a life of secret sins or even like obvious sins. And they think they can get away with it and would lie to, to others, to family members, to church believers, or to other co-workers. God cannot be mocked. God is all-knowing. Hallelujah. We can never hide anything to God. Psalm 139 says, Darkness is as light to you. Where can I run from your presence? Where can I hide? Darkness, the darkness of sin, the darkness of evil doings, lying. God is God of light. He sees everything. And so let us tell this story to one another and to our children so they will understand that lying is not a little thing. Eleven, verse 11, again, great fear seized the whole church. And all who heard about these events. So not just the whole church, but everyone outside of the church, outside of the group of the believers, heard about the story of Ananias and Sapphira. And great fear seized them as well. So would you think that the next people who pledge oh i'm gonna sell my land i'm gonna sell my property for the benefit of the believers in need because as they were growing in numbers some people came from different places outside of jerusalem and so they had to be fed their needs had to be met and so people the believers that were there who had land property started selling and sharing the proceeds 
Do you think anyone else will still lie about what they sold their properties for? I don't think so. Because you risk the judgment of God to just fall down and die on the spot. Let us have the holy fear of a holy God. We think we can play around. Oh, I'll just repent when I'm at my deathbed. I'll just ask God for forgiveness when I'm dying. Or I'll just live this sinful life, you know, while I'm young, I'll enjoy my sinful life. And then I'll just ask God every day to forgive me, Lord, for this sin, for this sin of sexual immorality, for this sin of pornography, for this sin of addiction, for this sin of lawlessness, for this sin of lying, for this sin of adultery, for this sin of fornication. I'll just ask God to forgive me. Let us not abuse the grace of our God. Because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is life. Let us not belittle the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross for us, who once and for all, his sacrifice paid for our sins, past sins, present sins, and future sins. But let us not abuse the grace of God. So you can say, oh, lying is just lying. I'm, uh, it's less, less offensive than a murderer. Anything that separates us from God is sin. God is a holy God. He cannot tolerate sin. He cannot tolerate sin in his presence. That's why we come before him in the name of Jesus Christ. What he sees is not our own righteousness, but the righteousness of Christ. Because of what Jesus has done for us, we stand before God, cleansed, justified. And we ought to appreciate and understand such love and not abuse it. Anyways. And so, verse 12, the apostles continued to perform many signs and wonders among the people. Signs and wonders among the people. And all believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. You know, Solomon's colonnade is the porch that's around um, the temple. Right? It's huge. There's 162 columns, right? Of, it's a porch, huge porch. The columns are two to 27 feet tall. The columns are so big that three people holding arms outstretched together in the form of a circle are not even enough to, to, em to embrace that huge uh, columns. That's how huge... The colonnade is, and that's where most people gather, right? They debate, they discuss uh, faith. And so that's where the believers used to meet, you know, sharing about Jesus, talking about Jesus, you know, maybe debating with others about the, the good news, right? To, to persuade them about Jesus Christ. And so no one else dare join them, right? for fear of, of what the, the high priests and the leaders in those days would do to them. Maybe they might end up in prison like, like Peter and John, the apostles. And even though they were highly regarded by the people, the people, the, uh, the people around them were not joining them right, for fear 
of the consequences of joining them. And yet, verse 14, even though they did not join the meeting together at the colonnade, nevertheless, verse 14, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their numbers. So they probably did not join the public gathering, but after, you know, the gathering, uh, you know, dispersed, so then they would probably go to the apostles, to the disciples, and they would tell, how can I be saved? I want to believe. I want to live the life of the way of Jesus Christ. Added many more women, men and women, believed in the Lord and were added to their numbers. Hallelujah. Church, these days recorded in the book of Acts have not ceased. It is just we, many churches have substituted the Holy Spirit with programs and activities. And, and you know, I'm not saying programs and activities are bad. But we need to move with the, the lead of the Holy Spirit. Of course, there has to be order. But more than order, we, we desire the moving of the Holy Spirit where signs and wonders will lead people to Christ. And we have seen that and many testimonies of that even in our days, and especially in the nations where they, can, they don't have any other resource but to call on the name of Jesus Christ. And so as a result, as a result of the people gathering together, talking about Jesus, as a result of people praying together, breaking bread together, um, learning uh, the, the apostles' teaching about Jesus Christ, as a result, Many signs and wonders followed. And then as a result, verse 15, people brought more, more, the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. That's how strong the power of the Holy Spirit manifesting in Peter and the disciples and the apostles' lives are. So that that presence manifested in, in at least, you know, the shadow of Peter. Imagine church, just the shadow touching these people on beds and mats who were sick. And the Lord Jesus healed them. And 16, verse 16. So again, as a result. More crowds gathered also, so not just the locals in Jerusalem, but also from the towns around Jerusalem. Talk about traveling far, even though it's the next town. You know, in those days, the next town is several miles away. And the only transport might be a, a donkey or a, just walking and maybe a donkey, uh, you know, uh, with a cart where they lay their sick people on, on the cart to carry them and bring the sick. Bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits. And what happened? And all of them were healed. So, miracles can happen in the presence of our God. As we allow the Holy Spirit to move through us, as we invest time in prayer and fasting so that people, people's needs will be met, people's prayers will be answered, and we have been witnesses of healing miracles. And we, we have heard of 
miracles of restored relationships, marriages that have been miraculously restored, people that ha are, were supposed to be dying but are now still alive and serving Jesus. At the Lutz is an example of the miracle of Jesus still working in our day, in our time, in our generation. And so as we exercise that faith and live with the discipline of praying and fasting and learning, studying the word of God, and living in obedience to go out and preach the gospel, to speak the words of life that we learn as we study the word of God, to speak it out to our friends, to our neighbors, to our family members, to our co-workers. Church, signs and wonders will follow so that more and more people will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just because of the signs and wonders, but because they have experienced the great love, the great mercy of Jesus Christ. Just the same way that we have experienced that grace, that love, when someone shared to us the gospel. We vary in the ways that God has saved us but let us not forget let us keep sharing our testimony of how jesus how we encountered jesus or oh, how, how jesus encountered us actually right so that we will come to hear the gospel and make a decision to accept jesus christ as our lord and savior Let's keep talking about that because it's too great of a story to keep to ourselves. It's too good of a news to, to keep to ourselves. There's so much bad news out there that people need to hear the good news of what Jesus has done and is doing and will do in our lives. Hallelujah. All of them were healed. Many tormented by impure spirits. Many who were sick. In our days, are there many who are sick? Yes. So many different kinds of diseases and cancers, right? Are, are people tormented by impure spirits, demonic spirits, right? Yes. Demons of oppression, depression. People need to be delivered because that's what Jesus has been doing when he was living on earth as a man and God at the same time. He cast out demon spirits and healed those who were afflicted with sickness and delivered those who were captives of impure spirits. So church... Let us follow the example of the believers in the book of Acts. Have a great reverence for God. Do you think Peter will be able to discern that Ananias and Sapphira lied unless he was spending time in communion, in worship, in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, praying unto Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit that gave him the word of knowledge, the discernment. The world out there needs the believers walking and talking and, and demonstrating the power of of the Holy Spirit so that they will get an, a touch from God, an encounter with Jesus. They will hear the gospel and be saved. They will believe and will be saved. 
There is such an urgency in our time for us to go and obey and preach the gospel because people are dying. Literally, physically dying and spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, mentally dying without Christ. Yes, there's medicine. Yes, there's treatments. There's therapies. There's counseling. But ultimately, it is the power of the Holy Spirit working through us that will bring about total healing. We thank God for those who are being used to cure diseases. But isn't it that that wisdom, that knowledge comes from the Lord as well? Amen. Even maybe if the scientist was as an unbeliever and yet God bestows wisdom as they research and research. And it takes an act of faith for them also to step out. Hey, why don't we try this? Why don't we test this so that it can be tested and tested until it becomes uh, a medication that is safe for use. So church, let's walk in awe and reverence of our God. Let's be careful like what Peter told Ananias. How is it that Satan has filled your heart that you lied. What made you think of doing such a thing? So there's a, a quote that I like that I we often hear, but let's really get the nuggets of wisdom from these. It goes, watch your thoughts, for they become words. What we think about, what we read about, what we listen that we input into our brains, into our conscious and subconscious, will be there, stored. Be, be careful because they become our words. And then watch your words for our words become actions what we always speak about will we will end up doing we keep saying negative things then we will end up doing negative things we keep saying good things great things about the future and we'll end up doing great things as unto the lord and excelling and and moving forward watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your words, for they will become your actions. Watch your actions, for they become habits. It only takes 21 days to create a habit. 21 days of repeatedly doing the same thing every day to develop a habit. Good or bad. So let's be careful. Reading the Bible for 21 days and you set yourself up for the habit of reading, praying for 21 days, maybe 10, 15 minutes at the, at the onset and then growing it in 30 minutes, maybe an hour later on, you wake up earlier. It becomes a habit of the spiritual disciplines that make us walk more sensitively to the leading of the Holy Spirit, to walk in wisdom from the Word of God that we soak ourselves in, to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, having the mind of Christ, having that discerning spirit that we can assist others in making the right decisions. Not just counseling from human wisdom. For human wisdom is so far below God's wisdom. But counseling with heavenly wisdom that comes from the word of God. 
not just as an intellectual study, but as a spiritual food that we fill ourselves with so that we can draw from it when needed. Be careful what you music you listen to every day for it becomes a habit. And what you listen to in your music, you end up singing while you're in the shower. You end up singing that music or humming that tune when you're cooking or doing stuff. Does it glorify God? Or does it just satisfy the flesh and the body and it suppresses the spirit? of God it suppresses what our spirit longs for fellowship for worship to praise God let's be careful with our actions for they become habits how to break a bad habit is you stop doing it for at least 21 days and then you break off from that habit. It will take discipline. You will have like withdrawals. Oh, I, I need to play that game. Oh, I need to, I need to listen to that, that music. Oh, I need to eat this, this, this carbs. I need to eat this uh, ice cream, right? No, nothing bad about that, but in excess, that it becomes an addiction that we let go of all self-control, that we, we didn't even notice that we've been playing games two, three, four, five hours into the night already. And we expect to be powerful in our walk with Christ. God, forgive us for the lives of deception that we live as Christians. Watch your actions for they become habits. When you have the habit of saying, good morning, how are you? Thank you, please do it 21 days consecutively. Train your child that way 21 days and it becomes a habit. But most parents don't want to invest the time. Oh, let them do what they want. That is the recipe for lawlessness. God ordained parents so that the children will be brought up in the knowledge and in the faith in Jesus Christ. Let us take that responsibility seriously and don't relinquish that authority to the schools, to the government. Because godly parents, as godly parents, we need to be living a life of example, not as hypocrites, right? But genuinely going through the spiritual disciplines ourselves that our children are watching us. So when they see us waking up earlier than usual to pray, to worship, to read the Bible, then guess what? they will want to follow that example. They will see that prayer works. They will see that God indeed answers prayer. They will see that God can indeed heal broken marriages. They will see that God can indeed heal sicknesses, cancers, leukemia. They will see that indeed God can deliver from alcoholic addiction, from drug addiction, from sexual addiction, from pornography addiction. And then watch your habits, for they become your character. Watch your habits, for they become your character. Our desire should be for us to become more and more like Christ in our attitudes, in our thoughts, 
in our words, in our actions. A long time ago, there was like a, a, a phrase that was popular, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Like you would ask yourself, what would Jesus do if, if in this situation? How can someone know the answer to that if they don't even know Jesus? How can we know what Jesus would do if we don't even study the life about Jesus, the life of Jesus? We don't even read the word of God, the word made flesh. And so we end up doing our own thing. We end up walking in, 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 in foolishness. We end up walking apart from the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Be careful with our habits. For they become our character. Can people tell you that hey, you have changed? You are more kind, kinder. You are more soft-spoken. You are less angry. You are more generous. You are more loving. That is the character that the Holy Spirit wants to bring about in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Not rage, anger, lying, deceitfulness. And watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. Ultimately, all of us will die. Ultimately, we will end up in our final destination, which is death. But after death, there is life eternal. And where we spend it, in heaven or hell, is our personal decision. You cannot play with the mercy and grace of God and thinking, oh, I'll just compromise my beliefs for now. And when I'm older, when I'm ready, then I'll get serious about walking with Christ. How do you know? You will become, you can still be older. You may, you may not even live another day. Church, let us get right with God and walk in holiness by the Holy Spirit working in our lives, not our own self-righteousness, but in our learning and experiencing who Jesus is by the move of the Spirit revealing to us from his word and from the innermost being showing us, you know, who Jesus is from his word and allowing that character of Jesus to shine through us to others. Let the truth be told. Let truth be overflowing from our lips because truth sets free. Truth will give life. Truth spoken will bring freedom because it's seasoned with the grace of God. Let's learn from the life and death of Ananias and Sapphira. Don't risk it. Amen. Let truth be told. Let the light of the truth of the gospel shine through us. Let our good works be seen not for our self-aggrandizement or promotion, 
but people will see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. That's that's the ultimate goal of our lives. To love the Lord because His love compels us to love Him back and to love others enough to reach out to them and share to them the gospel by which they will be saved. Everything else is superficial. Everything else is of the world. It's not going to last. But the words of God spoken and proclaimed will last forever. It will be a seed in the lives of people we share it. And one day, someone will reap the harvest of that soul that makes a decision to believe in Jesus Christ and be saved. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for it. Your word has captivated our hearts and minds and spirit today. And I pray, oh God, that your word of truth will sink deep into our very hearts, into our very soul and spirit and will change and transform our minds, renew our minds, O oh Lord, that we may not live according to the worldly standards, but that we will seek to do what is pleasing the perfect and great will of God in our lives. Lord, forgive us for the sins that we have done. Forgive us for living lies, O oh God. Forgive us for living lives of deception. And Lord, we pray that Holy Spirit, you enable us to live in the truth. Because you are truth. You are the truth. You are the way. And you are life. Apart from you, oh God, there is deception. Apart from you, there is misdirection. Apart from you, there is death and eternal death in hell. And so, Lord, because we have made that decision, I pray that we will also make the decision to reach out to others so they may know, they may hear, they may captivate, they may be captivated by your grace, oh God, and believe in Jesus Christ and be saved. The Lord, when we go out and reach out to others, that they will be healed of their sicknesses, that they will be delivered of impure spirits, that they will be healed of, of broken relationships, that they will be delivered of addictions from all these things, oh God, in the name of Jesus. The Lord, when we speak forth your word, that God, the godly leaders will rise up, oh God, that you will bring conviction upon ungodly leaders, oh Lord, and they you will they will seek you, oh God, for guidance in how to run the city, the, the county, the nations, the state, oh God. Lord, nothing is so hard for you. You are able to touch the lives of teachers and students, the principals, oh God. I pray that you will let righteousness rise up in the name of jesus lord let the godly rise up and take a stand for the truth for the truth will set people free not some program not some activity but the word of god preached by the power of the holy spirit oh god we depend on you not on some man-made schemes or strategies but we depend on the Holy Spirit to do ministry. Oh God, not to just live for our lives in selfishness like Ananias and Sapphira kept for themselves what they could have shared and then lied to God and to the apostles. Lord, let us help us, oh God, to live our life in truth. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. And we bring to you the needs of your people. Lord, thank you for continually healing Nanay Kunsing. Oh God, she's out of the hospital already. Thank you, oh God, for extending her life. Thank you, Lord, for uniting our faith, praying for her. 
Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, even for touching my friend, Vanjie, in Florida, oh God. Even right now, you're healing her in Jesus' name. Even as she goes to her chemotherapy also, oh God, you, you are touching her to be totally healed. Lord, those who have been stricken and afflicted with cancer in the name of Jesus, I pray. I, I may not be able to call them out by name, Lord, but you know them, O oh God, and they are crying out to you even right now. And so, Lord, by your Spirit, touch them, O oh God, from the top of their heads to the tip of their toes. Your healing power flowing through them. But more than the physical healing, oh God, the spiritual, emotional healing, oh God, of their souls and spirits. I pray, Lord, that you deliver those who are in depression in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, set them free by the power of Jesus Christ, Satan, demons of depression, be gone. We break your powers in the name of Jesus upon the lives of our sisters, our brothers in the church in the brethren of, of the global church hallelujah let your joy just overflow oh god that they will walk in fullness of hope in jesus christ hallelujah lord even those who are going through struggles in marriages i pray that your healing power will flow through we break the, the hard-headedness the stubbornness oh god we break the spirit of adultery we break the spirit of infidelity we break the spirit of sexual immorality by the power of the lord jesus christ in jesus name let the marriages be healed oh god be restored oh lord that that couples will serve you together not living life separately giving appearances that be, just because they're christians but lord to really enjoy the union that you have given to married couples, hallelujah. Lord, I pray for our children, Lord God, that they will have a great fear and awe of you. That they will desire to know more of Jesus. And that they will desire to live lives in fulfillment of the calling and in obedience to the great commission, oh God, hallelujah. Lord, I pray for the, the sunshine, those who are in their senior years, oh God, that they will live lives of prayerfulness, of being spiritual warriors where they are. They may be limited in their mobility, oh God, but your spirit through them is mighty and they could wage war against the enemy in spiritual warfare in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Lord, I pray for our moms and dads, oh Lord, that we will continue, oh God, to wage war as well and walk in the righteousness of Jesus Christ and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit ministering to those who need Jesus Christ around us. Lord, I pray for spiritual leaders, oh God, that you will restore the fire, the fervor to do the ministry and to put priority in the preaching of the gospel and leading the lost to Christ. Holy Spirit, fill your church. Demonstrate through your people signs and wonders that will draw people closer to you, that will draw the lost to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, that we will walk in the power of your might, that we will walk with the fullness of your armor from the helmet to the breastplate to the sword to the shield to our feet shod with the gospel the preparation of the gospel of jesus christ and with the sword of the spirit we wage war against the enemies and we pray in the spirit seeking your mind lord seeking your heart who and what to pray for and lord we know that you have promised that we are your victorious church greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world the gates of hell will not prevail against the church because we walk in the power and the might of the holy spirit in jesus name hallelujah oh lord we wage war 
We wage war against the enemies of our soul, against Satan and his demons. We are more powerful because Jesus is in us. In the name of Jesus, we break the strongholds of Satan in this city of Fresno and Clovis, in this nation, in this state of California. We break down the strongholds of Satan, of demons. In the United States of America, in the different nations of the world, in the 1040 window, oh God, oh Lord Jesus, break through, break through the power of the Holy Spirit breaking through even right now. Hallelujah. Lives are being saved. Lives are being changed. People are getting healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, your power, your power flowing through your people. And Lord, I pray that you give us a, a desire, oh God, to know you more and more, to seek your face daily, oh God, to worship you, Lord Jesus, and not to worship idols. We come against the idols of materialism, of selfishness, the idols of self-ambition, Lord, but our ambition is to promote the gospel. Our ambition is to proclaim Jesus Christ to all peoples. Hallelujah. Our ambition is, oh God, to use the wealth that you have allowed us to, to work for so that it can be used, oh God, to preach the gospel, to, to support the missionaries, to support the church to go out and preach the gospel. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for your doing great things in these last days. You are saving hundreds and thousands and millions of people, oh God, in these last days. Not converting to religion, but converting to Christ. To an everlasting relationship with Christ. Hallelujah, our Savior, our soon and coming King. I pray, oh God, that your church, your church, We'll understand that we are just sojourners in this world. That your church will not get attached to this world, oh God. Because we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of a, a beautiful city made. Whose, a city whose foundations are made by God himself. We are looking forward to that great city, O oh God, that you have promised even to Abraham at the very beginning of, of your covenant. Lord, I pray that we will have a deep longing for your return, that we will have a deep desire, O oh God, for the heavenly things, not of earthly things in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Forgive your church, forgive your church. For we're busy doing our own business. Forgive your church, for we are proclaiming our own gospels. Lord, may we return to our first love and spend the rest of our lives in pursuit of obedience to your word to preach the gospel whatever the cost to preach the gospel whatever the cost to reach the lost oh god oh god hallelujah jesus christ oh build in us the character of christ build in us the character and mind of jesus christ oh lord that we will point others to the destiny that god desires for them the destiny to look forward to the return of our coming King. The destiny to go to heaven when we die or when we live, when rapture happens, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, victorious church, victorious church, rise up. Rise up, rise up. For the Holy Spirit works in us and through us. And the word that is promised that when God pours out His Holy Spirit as He is pouring His Holy Spirit upon young men and old men, men and women, youth, all ages. 
and we will preach and prophesy and proclaim your word and all who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved hallelujah we thank you O oh God for the answer to all the prayer needs that have been expressed by your people even the longings deep longings that words cannot express anymore in our hearts Lord you have heard them thank you Jesus for we pray all this in the matchless most beautiful and powerful name of our Savior Jesus Christ our soon and coming King whose return we always long and sing about Maranatha come quickly Lord Jesus come quickly Lord Jesus we pray this in Jesus name and everybody said amen and amen thank you church and thank you brothers and sisters all over that plugged in to our streaming I pray that you, you and I will continue to walk victoriously by the power and might of the Holy Spirit living in us in Jesus name in Jesus name to the glory of our God the Father Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. See you on Sunday night. A Sunday worship, not Sunday night. Sunday worship. God bless.